Today we're marking St George's Day and I wanted to share a few thoughts on St George. St George is the patron saint of England, but also of a number of other countries and cities and of course of scouting. Baden-Powell cho chose uh, St George to be the patron saint because he thought that the St George legend set a really good example uh, of courage and faith and perseverance. I think we all need encouragement, we all need to be inspired, and a number of us have heroes or heroines who inspire us. I have to say, uh, a bit of a hero of mine at this time is the Chief Medical Officer, Chris Whitty. I must admit though, I don't really know a lot about Chris Whitty. But what do we know about St George? Well, there's the St George of history and the St George of legend. First of all, the St George of history. Well, George was born in Cappadocia, which is uh, now in sort of modern day Turkey, in the third century AD. When his uh, father died, he moved back to Palestine, which is where his mother came from, and he joined the Roman army. He rose up through the ranks and soon reached the, uh, the level of tribune, and he was a, a successful military officer. The emperor of the day, Diocletian, began a campaign then against Christians. But George, himself a Christian with Christian parents, objected to this persecution and he resigned his military post in protest, tore up the, temp the emperor's order against Christians, thereby infuriating the emperor. George was, as a result, imprisoned and tortured, but he refused to deny his faith. Eventually, he was dragged through the streets of Diospolis in Palestine and beheaded. It's said that the emperor's wife was so impressed by George's resilience that she became a Christian and that she too was executed for her faith. So that's the George of history. And now a short animation on the George of legend. Once upon a time, there was a brave knight called George. George had lots of adventures as he travelled by horse across many lands. One day he came to a small village and met a man who lived in a cave next to the village. The hermit told the knight about the awful things that were happening there. A terrible dragon had come to live in the lake and attacked the village every day. The villagers didn't know what to do. First, they gave the dragon all their food. But the dragon just took the food and still attacked the village. So then the villagers gave the dragon all the animals from their farms. The dragon took all the animals but continued to attack the villagers. So then they gave the dragon all their gold and jewels. The dragon took all their money, but still was not satisfied. The king sent his army to try and capture the dragon. But the dragon was too strong and the knights of the army were too scared, and they ran away. With nothing left to give, the king could only think of one thing to help protect his people. He sent his only daughter, the princess, to the lake to wait for the dragon. When George heard this, he rode as fast as he could to the lake. Just then, the dragon jumped out from the lake and was going to eat the princess. George attacked the dragon. He fought very bravely, won the fight, and killed the dragon. George and the princess returned to the village, and everyone was very pleased that they would have no more problems with the dragon. Today, the story of George's bravery is remembered and George is known as the patron saint of many countries. The last book of the Bible, Revelation, tells of a dragon attacking a woman and of being defeated by a warrior. Now the dragon represents the devil, 
The woman represents God's people, and the warrior is Jesus, God's king, who sacrifices himself for the sake of his people. Of course, we learn from the Easter story that Jesus' death was reversed by God in the glorious victory of the resurrection. Now, whether or not George fought a literal dragon, we don't really know. But we do know that he fought a metaphorical dragon, as we all do. We all face fears and challenges and dangers that need to be overcome with courage and determination. Now, George drew his courage from his Christian faith, which enabled him to live out, to follow through on his beliefs and values. He had Jesus as his hero and role model. And as a result, he had great influence on others. Whatever challenges we face at this time and into the future, I would encourage us all to ask God to give us the kind of courage, wisdom and perseverance that St George had.